So the museum is focusing on its collections of science and technology of sound and vision. Um, so that's kind of core to the agendas. We want to be more open, engaged, and collaborative, and understand what that might mean and what that might mean to be connected to Bradford. We also want to take on this concept of the national museum within a local place and sort of think about some of the geographies and the implied geographies of that. So um, it implies status, it implies importance, all of the reasons why people didn't want the museum to close, but also quite hollow and not necessarily earned. And so we wanted to think about how different kinds of connections that already, it was like a given, we give you the National Museum and we can take it away. What we want to do is think about well, what are the geographies of connection, of strength, that already exist within Bradford. And Bradford has particular local connections to different parts of the world. Big community from Mirpur in Pakistan, um, in Kashmir, um, Salat in Bangladesh, Gujarat in India, particular places within the Caribbean, particular places in what are now Ukraine and Poland. So there's a rich set of geographies of connections that make this place up. So how can we put that in dialogue and reimagine the national through some of those rich community geographies uh, that exceed the nation in various kinds of ways? So uh, we, we did it together and we carried out together and really at the heart of it is, I mean, a very influenced by action research approaches, but, but also combined with thinking in complex ways um, through systemic thinking in various ways. And we're seeking to use this kind of participatory ontology as part of the way we're working. Sometimes that's easier than others. So one of the things we knew we wanted to do, we did tell the HRC we don't know what we want to do in the second half of the project, and they went for it, which we were very excited about. But we did set out an agenda in the first half, saying the second half would be designed by what came out of that first half as good emergent research design would, in technical would require. Um, but we did know we wanted to produce an exhibition. Um, and we're doing that, it's going to open in March. Uh, so it's a busy time at the moment. <laughs> um, but what we wanted to do is do some things core, that the museum conceived of being core, shall we say. So the museum would, in advance of the project, <coughs> conceive of delivering temporary exhibitions as absolutely core business. It's got empty space in these to So we wanted to do something that's not in any way marginal to the way the museum conceptualised itself and its relationship to um, its activity and what it did. Um, so it requires us to work across different teams. We've been working a lot with collection services that I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and marketing and communications. It just got us into the whole of what the museum does, which has been fantastic. Um, it allowed us to do stuff and to learn from it um, and to let new things emerge from that. It allowed us to actually really think about some of how the representational logics of decision making and representation of the world operate within the museum and how we could explore how to do different things. It allowed us to really get into that. And um, it allowed us to be in very specific dialogue with the decision making structures of the museum, which are quite hierarchical and there's a whole set of processes around them, by the population all the time. But we wanted to link that with um, kind of, well, devolved decision making, and I'll talk a bit more about how we did that in a moment. So the, the exhibition is going to be called Above the Noise. We did a lot of work uh, to determine what we should do it on, but um, one of the things that kept coming up, which links very nicely to the question of representation, was that there is an issue with Bradford being represented in certain ways within national media and policy. It's a place often um, uh, highlighted for questions of segregation between communities. Um, it's associated with the debates around Islamic fundamentalism, with women from certain communities not speaking English. These are just some of the things that come up regularly within national media and policy. And so one of the things that we, and I, we, we, we talked to lots of people to refine this idea and use the kind of community networking approach to take the idea out of the community broadcasting led on strand of work called open conversations working through the different networks within different communities to help develop and refine this idea but at the heart of it we're looking at how different strategies by which communities have recorded their own histories created their own cultural spheres and made social and political change and how local to local alternative <coughs> distribution networks and repurposing of technologies has been a core part of that. So that's the core of the story. And the ethos would um, frame it as collaboratively and um, to tell the stories of people who've got a stake in those particular stories. So collaborative production is the heart of it. But I now just want to like, bring some of those big ideas up, sort of shift I talked about into very specific things within the museum. So at the heart of 
this is to look at different strategies communities are taking to dealing with power. So we've got three different sections to the exhibition. One of them is critique, so where community groups and political activism have taken on political inequalities and dominant paradigms actively. So one core story in that is um, the Bradford 12, which many of you may have heard of. It's a group of young Asian men who in 1981 uh, produced petrol bombs, defend their communities from fascist and racist laws <coughs> to march through Manningham. They didn't use the petrol bombs, they were arrested and they were charged with conspiracy and taken to Leeds Crown Court. They, they pleaded community self-defence and were ultimately acquitted. So it's quite an amazing story that set a legal precedent around community self-defence. Uh, self so that's kind of, just to give you that example, that's one thing we're looking at. We're looking at bypass, so alternative networks. So the community radio station, pirate radio station, there's lots of stories in that section which are like how people set up alternative networks to do that. And then making your own worlds, kind of like how people on an everyday basis create their own realities in various ways. And so we're, used, we're looking at action and the way we're using action to produce the exhibition. And there'll be loads of events that follow up and keep those debates alive. Um, we kind of try and see culture as, as an ongoing collaborative creation. So there are various things within the exhibition that are going to be produced through the exhibition. Just to give you one example, we're doing a Bradford Slow News Bureau, which is taking on some of the paradigmatic news stories that are often used in Bradford, like the Bradford Riots, for example, which is often seen as being the trigger for white flight from city centre Bradford into the suburbs. So what we're doing is trying to tell that story slowly and from lots of different perspectives and to contextualise it. And so throughout the three months run of the exhibition, this newspaper will be produced um, that tries to tell a story that is told a lot but differently and from lots of different perspectives. Um, in terms of making the shift to anyone from everyone, what we're doing is we've Try to create a decision making structure where we have we've got 15 stories in the exhibition and each of them is being kind of produced by a story collective at a local level with quite a lot of default of decision making power. Um, and then we're having an exhibition collective which is convening for the first time on the 21st of January where we're going to get people to meet each other, hear about each other's stories, but they don't all know everything yet, um, be able to respond. So, yeah. Um, and we work together to sort of revise and reflect and plan some aspects of the public programme, some of the top level messaging in the exhibition. So we've kind of tried to use the emerging participatory structures of the exhibition to both create devolved spaces, which is in keeping with the DIY ethos of one of the um, strands of the project, at the same time create a kind of shared sphere for decision making at, at the whole. So we'll see how that works out, but that's our way of dealing with that. Um, and then in terms of conservation, one of the challenges has been really, really great working with the collections services team who have been up for the challenge, because what we want to do is bring in a lot of community loan objects. In smaller museums, some of this stuff is less of an issue, you have to say. Like, the bigger the museum, the more process there is. Government indemnity, insurance, lots of things. That, there are a lot of often really good reasons. What we've managed to do is exploring and experimenting with ideas of what kind of public space, what kind of medium space can the medium offer. This is such an ongoing debate with the museum practicing civics, isn't it? Like, how many of these third spaces, um, safe space for unsafe ideas, and then the owners of you know, that kind of the civic space idea. And so, given that we're looking at strategies within the tower, we're trying to draw in the different kinds of spaces that exist within Bradford. So, often mentioned is the fourth idea of bookshop, which is the Bradford Bookshop. It was the Bradford Bookshop in Bradford, but a place with many productions of newsletters with the settlers during the 70s and 80s, and the place where ideas were exchanged. The one in 12 Club, which is um, influenced by anarchist theory and anarchist politics, and is still existing. Um, and then there's the Library Cafe, very popular and important place, just, you know, just for places to meet cheaply, warm. You know, and remember very fond of the place that ideas were exchanged. So we're going to develop a space within the exhibition which is a homage to those different areas of spaces and then use that space and other spaces around Bradford to experiment with what, what role, what contribution the museum can make to a space for exchange of ideas within Bradford with its particular, well, yeah, with as an intervention. And there's lots of people who have said that's important. 
a friend and get into fights. Some people use the segregation space as my friend, that people and people would absolutely use the use of the way they frame that. So we're aware of that and how we're moving forward with that. So just to finish, um, I think Brexit is a it's, it's created a political opportunity, although there are lots of things that are so important and depressing um, about the situation that we're in as a country right now. There's no question that it also has produced a set of energy around the existing our political settlement in various ways. I sort of see that at local authority level, in kind of all sorts of politics, access politics, and all sorts of places. And museums are one of those places that's happening. So it's an opportunity to really fundamentally think this is something that we've been handed, oftentimes by 19th century philosophers, let's not forget. It's time to rethink really that. There's lots of good in there, there's lots that's running out of sea, and that we can't quite use in a way that you can I think the, the public, flowering of participating practice has been absolutely wonderful. And there's so much good work going on. But if you don't see the underlying philosophical conditions of that work, then it ends up not really changing that much. Which is why the fundamental shift, what I've been calling the participation ecology, can be of enormous use. I think it's about reinventing, rather than relying on this old idea of public trust, that maybe running on the TV now, rethinking what that might be, thinking about active agency, active participation and underpinning, that, and seeing museums not as the centre of every aspect of democratic, cultural, and cultural itself, but are participants in a much wider system of interaction and dynamic um, production of culture and place. Um, so that's where we're at this, this moment. Um, I think there are opportunities there's optimism with the dark, you know, so we're surprised with all of that, um, that we need to be working on now. So.